Okay, um, my name is Ginny Carnavalli. I'm a printmaker. I live in my hometown of Cambridge, Ontario. I went to school at the University of Guelph and studied fine art and English. Um, I guess that's where my printmaking journey really started. Um, I did some printmaking in high school, but uh, once I got to university and took an intro printmaking class, uh, I was completely hooked and it kind of caught me off guard. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but then my focus from then on was drawing, but I took as many printmaking classes as I could in a wide variety of areas to, um, to build my knowledge. And um, after school though, it was a little difficult because I didn't have the equipment needed for a lot of those things. I did a lot of lithography, uh, which I don't have access to a lithography studio. And uh, you know, I got married, had a family. So the first sort of collection I started after school um, was a, a series of small uh, floral relief prints um, based on you know flowers in my garden or in my mother's garden and um, they start off simpler but they're all the same size and uh, I can see the progression these one the first two were done early this was one of my newer ones Occasionally, I'll just, it'll just strike me. So it's kind of an ongoing series. Every time I, I'm struck by an image, I will create a new plate. Um, this is one of my newer ones. And I can see a lot of difference in the work and in my carving over the years. It's, uh, it's, it's progressed quite a bit. Um, and this, again, my earlier carvings were more simple forms. And as I carried on uh, over the years, they've gotten a little bit more complex. Um, so these are the things that I did at home on my kitchen table with water-based ink um, when my children were young and hopefully napping. Um, but I've always been, um, so I you know, took a brief break for my family, but um, I've always been a maker. Um, my, my mom was always very creative and um, always did a lot of sewing, so on the on our trips to Lens Mill or Fabric Land, I was always in love with all the patterns and colors uh, in, the, in the fabrics in the store. And my dad, on the other hand, was creative in his own way. He trained as a carpenter, but he is also a master plumber and a pilot. And we spent all of our, all the vacations, family vacations we could get in Northern Ontario in the lake and exploring the woods. And um, that has, is something that my family still does to this day and we all do it all together. And it's been a huge influence on, on kind of who I am and, and my work. It's all very, very much a part of my work. Um, okay. Um, I connected with the, um, so when I connected with the Riverside Print Group, I was doing a lot of acrylic painting with um, instructor Lori Wanfer Nolan, and I had a really great community-based group um, doing a lot of acrylic painting. And I, again, uh, northern scenes and the forest and florals were were still my subject of choice. I connected with um, Donna Stewart and um, Heather Franklin and uh, they suggested I come and check out the print studio and my kids were a little bit older by this time and uh, I dropped in on one of the drop-in prints at the Mary Meisner print studio and and uh, I was hooked again so this is the first set of prints before I became a member of the Riverside print group that I created at the studio um, there are three, three small, they're called my Birch Forest series. They are three small plates. This is the copper plate, one of the copper plates that they were made from. I printed small editions of, of each of the three. And then actually, I believe it was Heather, uh, Heather Franklin suggested, why don't you print them as one print? And so this is the 
uh, edition of only five that I printed with all three pl plates going through the press at the same time. Um, so this was sort of a eureka moment for me. And I don't feel like it will ever, the learning will ever end. I feel like every print you do, there's a new approach, there's a new option, there's always something for you to learn in a different direction you can take it in. So this was a, a big moment for me because I thought, wow, like it doesn't just have to be a rectangular plate with one image. There's so many different things we can do. So this was my first um, Intaglio dry point series after meeting the print group. Um, but meeting them and reconnecting with uh, printmaking enthusiasts really changed the trajectory of my uh, work. And it's still primarily print to this day, and that was in 2012. Um, and I joined the group in 2013, and, um, or they invited me to join the group in 2013, and um, they have been a great inspiration, and we all really, um, just having that community of people to give you ideas that might help you think outside the box or help you problem solve because printmaking is really about process. There are so many different printmaking processes as I'll show you um, and you can take it in so many different directions. So for me, I'll often get an idea and it will, my word is percolate, it'll percolate for a while and it'll take a long time sometimes because I'll have an idea of what I want to do but I have to figure out which processes will work best and how to get to that final product that I'm looking for. Um, and sometimes, uh, as you'll see, I, I love to combine different types of printmaking to kind of get that, get that uh, final, final product. I should say, for people that don't know what intaglio printmaking is, um, this type of printmaking is dry point intaglio, where um, generally a metal plate copper or aluminum or zinc, uh, sometimes plexiglass, are used. And you use an etching tool and you actually draw your image into the surface of the plate by creating grooves. The grooves are what the ink will sit into. You will wipe the surface clean, but the ink in the grooves is actually what prints and creates your, creates your print. Another series that is ongoing for me, because Cambridge is my hometown, um, I started actually, I did the first one in 1995, um, and have more recently continued on, and I have a long list of landmarks and buildings and things that I will, will continue to, to print, is my, what I call my Cambridge series. So there are actually, at this point, there are, are nine prints in the series, but it's sort of ongoing. Um, I'm basically documenting scenes and uh, landmarks, uh, primarily Galt because that's where I grew up, but I am kind of expanding and I'm, I am looking at landmarks in Preston now and I will be doing some in Hespler as well. Um, this is where I grew up. These are buildings that I remember as a little girl walking down the streets going grocery shopping on a Friday afternoon with my mom and my grandmother. So it's, I started it as a bit of a personal history for me. Um, but I find that a lot of people, it resonates with a lot of people, a lot of local people, a lot of people that have lived here before. Um, and the architecture is so beautiful. So, and it won't be here forever. So that's, it was a bit of a, it's a bit of a documentation process, personally, but also kind of historically. I want to have these images available for many years to come when the, the buildings won't be there anymore. So, unfortunately, the Preston Springs Hotel is a good example of that one. Um, but this is, a, this is sort of a labor of love for me. This is one series that is an open series. The rest of my work is limited edition. Um, I created the plates and I wanted to keep this accessible for everybody. So with an open edition, I was able to, I'm able to offer them for sale for, for less so that they're affordable kind of for, for the whole community. And that was my intention behind it. So the process for these Cambridge prints is very different. It's actually the opposite of what intaglio printmaking is. It's called relief printing. So in this process, you're, you actually use carving tools and you carve out areas of the surface. 
So the ink gets rolled onto the surface of the plate. So whatever areas you carve away with your carving tool are what uh, are, create your image. So all the, all the white areas of this plate have been carved away and the ink will only sit on the dark areas. And then I place the paper on top once the plate is inked and I burnish it with a usually a wooden spoon. I print them by hand and, um, and, and that is what creates your image. So the ink sits on the surface with these, but with the dry point intaglio, the ink sits down into the grooves you've created. So it's kind of opposite. Um, kind of takes us up to my journey with the print group. Um, so I started, like I said, I joined the print group um, by invitation in 2013 and we've been working together ever since as a group and it is uh, such a wonderful feeling to have a community of people of like-minded individuals. We all work very differently. We all have different styles and different approaches and techniques that we enjoy, but we are all there to kind of problem solve and to bounce ideas off of and to just share our, our love of printmaking. Um, and we just, we really want to kind of engage the community and, and teach them about that. We've done a lot of events surrounding that idea as well, right? We are, we are happy to talk about printmaking for hours. <laughs> once we start, we usually can't stop. So, um, so I created a, a variety once I got in there and I started printing more regularly again. Um, it's primarily an intaglio based, uh, it was a pr primarily an intaglio based studio. Um, so I started doing more of the types of printmaking that I couldn't do at home on my kitchen table when my kids were young. Um, these are some of my earlier prints from 2013 and 2014. Um, I learned a lot of things from the print group and new techniques that I had not learned in school because you're kind of limited to how many courses you can take and I specialize in more relief printing in university. Um, so with the print group, I learned um, a little bit more etching. I had taken an intro etching course, but using chemicals and, uh, and you had to wear big respirators. The print group taught me more green processes that are better for your health and better for the environment and were much safer to do. So I was more comfortable doing that type of printmaking. Um, I learned how to do uh, mesotint, which is an intaglio process where you actually create texture on your whole plate so that it prints black and then you scrape back down and you burnish back down to get the highlights to come up on your plate. So you're working black to white instead of white to black. Um, and I had never done it before. But so I've learned a lot of new techniques since I've been with them. I don't think in printmaking you ever stop learning. It's you learn the basics of each technique and then you take it a step further and you and you push it and you explore it's, it's all experimentation and exploration and over after over 30 years of printmaking there's still so much that I'm learning with every print so it I just don't think that that it's a lifetime of constant learning so you can see that my subject matter is is very much um, very, very much trees. It's very northern. I'm very inspired by the northern landscape. That has been such an influence in my life, and uh, and my family and I have always found joy in the forest and in in northern Ontario. And so um, that is a constant theme. Um, nature, you know, our my gar our gardens uh, and northern Ontario are big themes in my work. So I learned, speaking of learning new processes, so this was one of my early prints. This is actually from 2012, called Blooming Poppies. This was my first um, attempt at using a technique called Shin Uh I was taught by David Scott. He's the one who showed me the technique, and I had never used it before. It's where you use, um, in my case, a hand-painted tissue and it is um, adhered to the print as the print goes through the press. So it's a little difficult to explain. But you will create your plate 
I created my printing plate, and the tissue is this, the red pieces are the tissue, and they were cut to fit the image on my plate. The plate was inked, the tissue was put in place on the image, the paper was put on top of that, and it went through the press all in once, so the tissue stuck to the paper and the ink printed on the tissue. And that's how this was done. So I, I credit David to showing me how to do that because it really influenced a lot of uh, work that I did going forward. So this, this is an artist proof and plate of a print I call Twin Birch. It, um, it's a copper plate. I have used my etching tool to scratch the birch images into the plate. And when I printed a proof, which is a test print, um, this is the image that I got. And it had lots of different ideas about how I wanted to do the background. When I was thinking about this print, I was sort of pulling from my acrylic painting experience. I wanted to use I wanted to get the nice crisp graphic white and black of the birch trees, but I also wanted to find a way to add color to it. And um, th this is where the Shinkale came into play. So I decided that I would hand paint, um, I would hand paint some, some tissue and cut it to fit the gaps around the birch trees to create colorful backgrounds for the birches. Um, and I decided to do a varied edition, which means in total there are 15 prints in the edition, but every single background is different because they're all individual hand-painted paper and uh, no two backgrounds are exactly the same. So these are all created from the exact same plate, but I hand-painted I hand the tissue in using different colors of um, watered down acrylic paint and even some different tissue to get different effects. It's almost like a dream type landscape feel to them. So I mentioned that I've always had a love for patterns um, throughout my childhood in, in the fabrics in the fabric store but, but everywhere else. In the 70s wallpaper that was all through my parents home, um, you know, tablecloths, any type of pattern, I've always been, I've always loved patterns, and I still do. So this print is called An Owl by Design. Um, it is actually based on the wallpaper that was in my parents' bedroom when I was a child, because I always thought that this section looked like an owl when I was little. That was sort of the basis, but I wanted to in university, I played around with the idea a little bit of, of having um, sort of 3D images coming out of prints, but also having flat portions. Um, so I wanted the owl to be realistic against the, the flatter backdrop. So this was the first in a series that I've sort of carried on where I'm kind of juxtaposing a flat pattern with a kind of a 3D image. Um, but this was my first one. Uh, the plate is, um, so this is also where I started playing around with combining different intaglio techniques. So the owl on the plate is done as a dry point image. Um, I drew the owl on there or scratched it into the plate with the etching tool. The pattern was actually um, created by painting a a resist or a barrier um, onto the plate. So I actually had to hand paint the pattern onto the plate to block out all the areas of the plate that I didn't want to be etched by chemicals. So the open areas are etched by chemicals to create uh, almost pitting or depth and the ink would sit in the depth but anywhere I had covered and protected um, would not. So I had to cover this area first create paint on the pattern or paint around the pattern to expose the pattern to the chemicals. Then that hard resist is removed and then I dry pointed the owl onto there 
to get the plate. The purple, because this is etched so deeply, what I had to do with this plate is I inked it up in black. So that put ink into, the, into these recesses and into the grooves of the owl. But then I actually rolled purple ink onto the surface. So I'm actually combining almost a relief technique as well as an intaglio technique. And that is how I got the purple background on this image as well. So this is where it really started to play and my brain was like, oh my goodness, I can do a million things with this. Like, where else can I go? Um, so this was sort of number one and I kind of have a series of these animal prints that I've done as well. So the next one I did in this series was uh, my bee print. Um, same kind of thing, I was combining those techniques. I created the almost honeycomb look by painting, blocking out on the plate any of the areas that are white and anywhere where the bee was going to be to create kind of that honeycomb look to protect the plate. I etched it and then I dry pointed the images of the bees. And then, so that gave me the black and white print when it was printed. And then once I had done that, I hand painted tissue again. So this time it wasn't ink, I actually used shin clay. I hand painted tissue and I had to cut it to fit the plate exactly and cut around the bees and line it up exactly on the plate for it all go to go through the press together. So it's a very, it can be a very finicky process, but um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And again, those are, not one of those is the same because of the hand painted paper. So I just wanted to play with all the different things you could do other than just a black and white print. That was what was really striking me. So my next idea was for, this one is called Tracks in the Tapestry. So I actually worked as a textile designer for many years and uh, so I still have that love of textiles, I still have that love of design and pattern. I created my own damask pattern um, that was all moose and antler and hoof print related. Um, and I have nicknamed him Elliot and put Elliot in there. So again, I'm trying to have Elliot coming out of this, becoming more 3D and coming out of this sort of flat damask pattern in the background. And I feel like all of these few patterned ones that I've just shown you really set the stage for this one. Um, this one is my most recent, although it was done in 2016. This one I thought about for at least a year and a half before I could figure out exactly what I wanted to do. Because with these ones, they were just coming out of a box and I wanted to find a more natural way for it to look like the animals were more alive against this flat pattern. Um, so this one is called the chase. I took the idea of it being wallpaper and I had the wallpaper curling away in front of the pattern. Um, and I feel like that really pushes, pushes the animals out and more forward and makes it more of a natural transition. What I love about this one um, is I was sort of playing with the, you know, the, the, the live animals and the animals in the wallpaper and the, an, the live animals are the ones that aren't moving but the flat ones in the wallpaper are the ones that are moving. So you get this real play on life, right? Like the wallpaper looks lively, but you know, there's that tension and that stillness in the 3D images. So I really, I'm quite proud of this one. Um, so this, again, same technique. So there are 15 of these all together, but it is a varied edition. I have kept half of the edition um, black and white or with a warm black. Um, but I did do shin clay on some of the other prints in the edition. And so you can see, you can get a very different effect by using different colors. Um, so I did, again, I just played around with color and I wanted to kind of make it more vibrant. And in a way it helps the animal, uh, the, the fox and the hare to kind of pop out of the print as well. Then my life kind of got a little busy. And I didn't, uh, you know, I, I did have a full-time job at the time. And uh, 
my kids were getting to that age where it just gets busy again and I didn't always have a lot of time to prepare and to prep because printmaking is really, I would say, at least 80% of the work is in prepping your plate and coming up with the idea. It's all about the process and the printing is actually, it's, it's, the, it's the reward, but it's also, it, it's a very small amount of time compared to the amount of preparation it takes to, to, to make a plate. I started getting into monotypes because I would want to go down to the studio and do some printmaking, but I wouldn't have time to do any kind of prep. So I started playing around because monotype, you are, with monotype you are just taking a blank plate and in my case, rolling a layer of ink on a plate that is blank. You haven't done any prep work to it. It has no image on it. And these were all created by just removing that layer of ink to create your lights. So it's called like a subtractive method. I put a, whole, a layer of ink on the plate and I just, anywhere I wanted it to be light, I would remove the ink using a variety of materials, bits of mat board, cloth, Q-tips, whatever you have handy to create your image. So these are very much just drawn into the ink and once you print it, um, they're monotype because once you print it, the image is gone. You may get, um, you get one print and then you may have enough ink on your plate to run it through the press again and get what they call a ghost print. So this is actually the ghost print of this plate, the ink was thick enough and dark enough that I have one print that is the same image but it's a lot darker because it was the first one that I ran through the plate. And because there was enough ink, I thought I'll try a second one. And this one came through. But these were all sort of just kind of drawn from memory. I wasn't using any kind of reference. Um, and that exact scene may not exist somewhere, it's just sort of the feeling of Northern Ontario, and that's always kind of been important. Uh, and then, really, it just, it's sort of, I, I, can, I just continued on doing the same types of things. So, this is another dry point print called Forest Light. Um, but again, I, I continued experimenting with different types and learning new techniques. Um, I took an, a, a a green printmaking class with Donna Stewart offered by Idea Exchange where I learned um, to etch on aluminum with uh, safe chemicals. Um, so now it's something that I can do at home. Um, that is another dry point print. So this one is called Forest Light. This one is Northern Shore. This one is called Shaded Path. So reduction print is where I would say take a relief block, I would cut a certain amount away and then I would print it. Then I would cut more away of the same block and print it again. So once <clears throat> you have cut more of the block away, you can never make any more that are exactly like that first cut. So with each color, you cut away more of the plate, so by the time, let's say if you have three or four or five or multiple colors, by the time you get to the end, the plate is almost gone because you're just printing small pieces of it. So this was just a, a two color reduction. I went to um, Open Studio in Toronto um, with one of the other group members, Daryl Nunn, and we took a weekend course on how to print letterpress. And so we also have that process available to us um, and that was just something else, another way of, of creating work and something else to learn, another technique that we could incorporate. So this is uh, a one of a kind, but it kind of, it, uh, it just shows you that I'm always playing and I'm always thinking and I'm always trying to find ways to incorporate things and, and use different techniques. So this has, um, I, I printed the rabbit portion of my other plate multiple times on, on tissue. And then I cut it out to fit. Then I printed 
um, just silhouettes. I, I cut out silhouettes of tissue of that same rabbit shape or the hair shape. And I almost created a bit of a collage with all those shapes. And then I had the large plate and I monotyped the background around them. So making quite a puzzle for myself, I seem to like to do that. Um, I got the mono print portion ready. I wiped all the ink off the area where the rabbits were going to sit by actually creating a template of paper so that I could not ink that area. Then I added the sticking paste so that the tissue would stick to the print. And then it all went through the plate in one, in one print. So, but you can see sort of my work building. I, I still do some simple, simple prints that are only using one technique, which I love. But I also create these crazy complicated puzzles in my head, but they won't go away. So I have to do them. But it sometimes takes me months to figure out how I'm going to pull it off, basically. How I'm going to complete that. So that's just one example of a big puzzle I created for myself. This was a fun, uh, actually, competition that was done by a, a lady that I actually followed on Instagram. And um, it's a reduction grid. So the, the plate itself was just the size of a square. And you, again, I printed the, the yellow first. So the only, th anything that's white, so that's all I cut away from the yellow. Then I cut more away, so I created the circle image. And then I cut more away, and all that was left was the blue on top. But you don't just print it once, you printed it, we printed it in a connecting grid. And so this was just kind of a fun project, but it was done on, through, through people I met on Instagram, but it was a great project and I thought it was really fun, but it's just another way. If, and, but again, this is, goes back to my love of patterns. So this was just one of the other projects I did kind of for fun. Uh, since the pandemic, since the pandemic, I have just been, um, it's, it's been a, there's been a lot going on, and so I have been spending some time just doing monotypes and work that is based on images or items that I, you know, find in my, around my home. And these are some of the monotypes I created, which is a different approach to the monotypes, where you're masking or you're blocking out or creating texture um, within the ink on the plate um, using found objects. So in this case, it's, it's a series of maple leaf monotype prints I've done based on it, leaves I've found in the garden. So I've done some other ones as well, but these are some of the images too. So there's different monotype techniques you can use, additive and subtractive, where you're adding items or you're adding ink or you're taking items away or you're using items to create texture. It's, it's, it's endless, like printmaking is endless. You can, you can just be doing it for your whole life and still never have tried everything. So, so these are my two most recent prints. Um, they are intaglio, which is, uh, they are intaglio dry points, um, which is where I am scratching the image into the surface of the plate. Um, they are not on metal plates. They are on uh, plexiglass, so that's another option. The one reason a lot of people don't use the plexiglass is because you get, um, it's not as, it doesn't wear as well as the metal, so you don't get as large an addition. So um, if you're looking for a larger addition, then a lot of printmakers will go with a metal plate, something that's, that's going to hold the lines or the etching or the image better. Um, I don't do a lot of really big additions, so these work okay for me too, and it was sort of like the materials I had at the time, and it worked out quite well. Um, for um, This one is called Into the Forest, yet another forest scene. 
Um, and this one is called um, Oh My Heart. And it's based on bleeding hearts that um, were in my garden. Um, I wanted to play around with the shape of the actual plate itself. And this is something that I'm just starting to get into now. Um, and that is another reason why I chose the plexiglass, because it can be cut into, if you have the right thickness, it can be cut into different shapes and you can do different things with it. Uh, what I also did here was um, some a la poupée inking, which is where I, I inked the plate in the green color, but then it's almost like the relief printing. I added, added the pink and the yellow ink to the surface. So in the grooves, the green ink was creating the image, but I also added some accent ink mainly with my fingers. So they're all, each one is hand inked and that additional ink put on to give it that uh, multiple color. And it only goes to the press at once, so it's all done individually. It, take, it took me about um, over half an hour to ink each plate um, individually. So in, in this case, it's, you know, it's, again, printmaking is labor intensive, but so worth, so worth all the variety and, um, and the effects that you can achieve. So, so that's sort of where I am today, other than the piece that I did for the current ex exhibition.